I'm going to say, because Sakura is no longer Sakura, it's Sakura now, for the moment. Alright. Oops. Okay. So, my name is uh, Mohamed Attari. I'm from uh, Hassania School of Public Engineering and Works. And um, I'm very delighted to be here. I thank uh, all the people that were uh, that invited us and that made this trip uh, a memorable one. Thank you very much. So, I'm going to start my presentation and I'm going to be the nerdy guy here. Um, I'm going to talk about the subject scientifically. I'm going to approach the power of ideas in a way that will allow us to know more about could we engineer ideas that are powerful, all right? So, we have had many years, uh, we have been living in, on this earth and we have had an impact on it, although our duration on this earth isn't significant uh, uh, compared to the time that the earth has uh, been existing. And so, in this little time, we have caused a lot of trouble. We have caused many changes. We have had constructions, we have had uh, railways, we even caused global warming, and we also had, had atomic bombs, which are a great example of how powerful some of our ideas are. So, there is no doubt that there is like an abstract, imaginary, representative uh, skill that we have in our minds that allow us to take an image and project it into uh, reality. This is what we call idea. An idea can be uh, considered like pixels of an image. Okay? Each image has uh, its own characteristics. It has uh, its own format, its own resolution, uh, its own uh, uh, height and size, but it, this doesn't mean that the bigger the resolution, the better or the more powerful the idea. I can show you uh, a high resolution picture of a monkey, and that wouldn't be really powerful and inspiring. But if I show you a, a low resolution of the Mona Lisa, that would be very inspiring and very artistic. All right. So having said that, um, I'd like to talk more about myself. I'm a soon-to-be engineer. And what we do in engineering is we, uh, we, we try to uh, use the scientific scheme that we have in order, to, uh, um, in order to solve problems using certain tools. Certain tools like storing plans, like managing teams. We, we need to get out of problems with the scheme that we have. And what I want to say here is that I know that not all of us are engineers. But all of us are humans with a certain scheme in our head. And this scheme, whether it is scientific, whether it is artistic, allows us, in a kind of way, to uh, attain the objectives that we set for ourselves. So, I have put here three chairs. This will help you remember the objectives of my presentation. Alright? First of all, how can we describe an idea? Then, after we have described this idea, can we evaluate it? And if we can evaluate it, can we predict the power of this idea? Can we have an idea? Can we have beforehand an idea of how powerful the idea that we are studying will be? So we're going to start by the first one described. I'm going to sit here all along with the first chapter described. All right? So an idea can be described as a, uh, as, the, as a lighter of a candle. It can be the water and care that we give to a plant in order to grow and prosper. Not all, all ideas that make it to the world uh, are, benef are beneficial. But not all ideas make it to the world. So we need to make a comparison between what are the true ideas. For me, the true ideas are ideas that are considered as projects. All right, so I'm going to do some math here. I'm going to define precisely what are the terms that define or describe an idea. We can, say, we can say that the power value of an idea is a function, function of three variables, time, space, or physics, and persona. Let's start by time. Time designs the duration or the period in which the idea has 
appeared. The physics contains two parameters. It contains the environment on which this idea has an influence and the physical characteristic of the idea itself. The persona uh, refers to the person, to the intelligence of the person, and to the analytical mind that allowed him to infer such an idea, yeah. right? So, we're going to have some, some, some lines, a line which will describe the process of an idea through time, through physics, and through persona. Remember, time, physics, and persona. Idea through time, this is the line. The first step is adulthood. I've compared an idea to the life of a normal person, but regarded differently. The first step of an idea is adulthood. Why? Because an adult person is a person who has a certain experience. And I want to point out that if you do not have experience, you cannot have ideas. You need experience, you need to have a motivation in order to carry on your idea. The second step is teenager. Teenagers are people who are very motivated about what they want to do. Sometimes they don't really know if it's good or bad for them. Like, if you give a teenager a great sum of money, you wouldn't know if this sum is going to be used in a proper way or it's going to be used in drugs or cigarettes or whatever. So, when the idea moves past this step, it gets to the childhood, uh, childhood step. In the childhood step, the idea starts to be uh, like a child, you know, child, they want to attain anything, they start comparing themselves to others, to other children that like have or possess some things that this idea doesn't have. So this is the maximum, this is the top level an idea can attain when it is in the childhood, when it is uh, beyond all aspirations that it has already set in the beginning. And then at the end, I wouldn't say the idea is dead. I would say that it fades away or it doesn't fit in the context on which it, in which it appears. It's the elderly phase, the idea fades away and maybe in another context it's going to appear once again. So this is the idea through time. Remember, time, physics and persona. The second parameter upon which the idea acts is physics. Now, I'm going to do the same thing. Idea through physics, I'm going to draw the line and the first step is abstraction. An idea starts as an abstract and blurred idea in our mind, blurred image in our mind, but which is fancy, we like it, although it's not very clear in our mind. That's the physical description of an idea at the beginning. Then we start thinking about it. We start saying, is it, can, is it adaptable to our environment? Can we use it in our environment or in which environment can it have influence upon? Next is resources. Once you say, okay, my idea is fine, I can apply to Morocco, or I can apply to worldwide, then I start looking for resources. This is why ideas should be regarded as projects in order to attain their goal. And then after the resources, well, it's the execution. Now, uh, when all these steps are executed correctly, then you have a good idea, good execution of the idea, and a good overall um, study of the idea. Now the third parameter is persona. Same thing, idea through persona, first the experience. The idea is a result of proper inspiration and proper experience. You need both of these in order to be able to have an idea. Are they, are they inner capacities or are, or are they capacities that you learn afterwards? This depends on you. But at the end, you need experience. You need to have uh, quite a good idea of your environment. And you need to have uh, already acted in your environment in order to infer a good idea. The next one is inspiration, and the third one is motivation. If you have inspiration, if you have experience, but you are not motivated about your idea, then you, you cannot make it work, it will all, it will lose, you will lose hope at the end, you cannot defend your idea, you should defend your ideas until the end. Some ideas kill their owners. Well next, I'm going to move to the next, uh, the second chapter of my presentation which is evaluate. Now, we have described ideas referring to all the parameters they are defined with, and now we're going to see how can we evaluate an idea, or the power of an idea? 
are going to do some graphics, and I'm going to represent in each axis the parameters we have set together in three different axes: time and physics, time and persona, persona and physics. Now, if we draw time and physics, I know it's a lot of math, but it will allow you to understand very well how things work. First of all, an idea. Uh, it's something robust, it's something strong, it's in the adulthood phase, remember? When it's very strong, it wants to uh, grow through time, it wants to prosper, it wants to get more physics strength. But once it gets its maximum, when it's in the teenager side or it's in the childhood side, it starts getting a little bit constant. It's not ascending, it's not descending, the idea is at the top level. Then at the end, through time, the idea starts losing. Not because it's weak, but it's the process of each idea, the environment change. Remember how idea depends on physics? The physics are not constant, they change. And that's why the idea cannot be eternal. The idea can be immortal, but cannot be eternal. The next graphic is the persona and the time. So how are the person or the people who are author of their ideas uh, behaving regarding their their ideas uh, through time. First, a person who is always motivated about his idea will never lose hope. He will carry on and try and try again. And remember how we, all, we, all, we always say you need to fail and fail and fail and then succeed. So the motivation of a person does not change. Maybe it gets from a step to another, maybe sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low, but it's always on the same level. It's always a horizontal line that represents how far this person can go in order to achieve his idea. Well, where there are unbridgeable obstacles, then the idea can no longer exist. Then, it's the third and final graphic. In this final graphic, I want you to concentrate a lot. This is the physics and the persona in one graphic. Do you notice the dots there? I call them the circle of paradise. That's why I brought a circle here. Because I want you to remember, whenever you hear the guru, I want you to picture the circle. I want you to know that when your circle is in that place of the, uh, uh, of the graphic, then you are in paradise. Why is that? Because in the physics, the idea is very strong. You are in, 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 in the childhood phase. And with the persona, you are uh, motivated about it. The more narrow, the more small your circle is, the more likely you are to be living in a paradise. Why is it a paradise? Don't we all dream to be young forever? Don't we dream to be young and carry on the things we love? That's exactly what this graphic means. It means that you are a happy person, you are a young person, and you are following your dreams all along. Find your circle of paradise. This should be the circle of paradise of the Gura people, all right? Many people have multiple circles. There are circles that are big and circles that are small. The bigger the circle, the more the risk. Because when your circle is big, then you get sometimes old, you get sometimes young, sometimes you are a teenager, sometimes you are a childhood, in, in, the, in childhood, and I'm talking uh, in, uh, in the terms of the idea, not in terms of you, of course. So there are many, many circles right here. So now we have evaluated an idea. When we evaluate an idea, we should see if this idea fits in our circle of paradise. Now we're going to move to the third phase of, and the last phase of my presentation. My presentation was to predict. Are we able to predict the power of an idea? Are we able to say that we can, before having an idea, uh, in reality, know how much impact is it going to have on the environment. Well, in order to know that, we need to uh, look and, uh, in the old ideas that have had an impact. We, in the database, we need to, to construct a database. And this database will, uh, will be regarded and will be studied. And the error that all of us think is that people who made it, people who had great influential ideas are people who were very intelligent or people who were very lucky. That's a mistake. I'm here to say that this is not true. These people have been intelligent in their field, have had 
a great analytical mind, the analytical mind which allows you to know the physics of your um, of your environment, and they have been lucky too. You have to combine all three things, all three parameters, in order to have a powerful idea. You need to you need to live in your circle of paradise. I'm going to repeat it because it's very important for you to know. So uh, at the end, what I want to say is that nowadays in Morocco. We have a lot of energies. We have a lot of people that want to work. A lot of people that want to uh, make, to go further. Why are we coming here? Why did we come from Casablanca? Why did we come from all over Morocco? In order to gather here and say, yes, we can do it. Yes, we can change. This is a way for you in order to study the idea you want to attain. It doesn't matter what people tell you. Like uh, my, my colleague said earlier, don't care what other people tell you. Don't let people distract your motivation. Draw your own circle of paradise. And I want this to be your circle of paradise. Thank you very much.